as we travel around by car, we expect the bridges we have to cross to be safe and secure. But many of them are very old, and a few have already collapsed. Wouldn't it be great if engineers could create a technology so that bridges could tell us what's wrong and how to fix it before it's too late? Correspondent Peter Standring reports on efforts to prevent another tragedy like the one that happened in Minneapolis not long ago. Minneapolis, 911. The bridge collapsed. People had stopped up on 35. The whole bridge fell into the river. At the end of rush hour on a hot summer day in Minneapolis, Minnesota, a major bridge over the Mississippi River suddenly collapsed. Seems like there could be people trapped in cars. Trapped in the river, there are cars sinking and people in yeah, there. We know, ma'am. Everyone's on the way. Over a hundred cars fell with the bridge, among them a community center school bus carrying 54 children. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it was just this big drop. We'd all hit our heads, come back down, hit our heads, come back down. You just heard kids screaming, oh my god, oh my god, what happened, what happened? The disaster killed 13 people and seriously injured over 100 more. And if this bridge collapsed, what about all the others like it across the country? We have 76,000 structurally deficient bridges in the United States. That's almost two and a half times as many as we had 20 years ago. And we need more modern, non-destructive technologies to inspect those bridges today to make them safer for the future. The cause of the Minneapolis collapse is still under a federal investigation, but here's what we know. The Minneapolis Bridge was an underdeck truss arch design made up of twin trusses of steel beams arranged in triangles and connected with steel plates called gussets. The trusses distribute the weight of the traffic throughout the structure, all the parts working together. But the design has no backup against failure. If one major part fails, the whole bridge can come crashing down. Investigators found that 16 of those connecting gusset plates failed, resulting in the catastrophic collapse. The tragedy was seen as a wake-up call, highlighting the need for technology that warns us before a bridge fails, technology appearing on bridges even today. About an hour's drive east of Minneapolis along Interstate 94, you'll find this bridge spanning the Red Cedar River here in Wisconsin. It has an under-deck truss arch design that's almost identical to the bridge that collapsed. In fact, this one is 10 years older, so down below on its aging steel structure, crews from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation are installing sensors to give it a kind of high-tech physical. This will keep me in the basket? <laughs> It'll keep you attached to the basket. Attached to the basket, okay. <laughs> I'm not crazy about heights, but the only way to see for myself was to climb into the basket as bridge engineer Finn Hubbard took me up over the edge and under the bridge. Uh, we're coming back now and, and taking a look at it with our sensors today uh, to find out how the bridge is doing inside, if you will, looking at the stress and the strain, the forces inside the members themselves. The sensors, called strain gauges, are welded onto critical spots on the bridge. What that does is it actually measures the strain, which is the actual stretching of the metal, sort of like stretching a rubber band. The gauge is attached to the bridge so that when the steel stretches, the gauge stretches, changing its electrical resistance. By comparing the gauge's readings to the way the bridge is supposed to perform, Finn can tell if the metal is overly stressed. And do you think ultimately this is making for a safer bridge, or at least is going to give you the information that you need to, to keep it safe? I think what it's going to do is, is give us that added measure of insurance that the bridge is behaving the way our computer model back in the office is saying it is. But strain gauges have serious limitations. They can only give you one type of information at one spot on the bridge, and they can't warn you of an imminent collapse. If we could only probe deep inside an old bridge's inner structure to find out which are in danger and which are sound, well, it turns out we can. The same way that submarines detect other boats using the echoes of sound waves, or sonar. At the University of California, San Diego, 
they're using a kind of sonar technology to find cracks in bridges. They're called piezoelectric sensors, and they can both send and receive high-frequency tones right through a bridge. So this one will launch a wave into the structure, while this white one here will then detect the signal at the other end. The wave is ultrasonic, so Eric's computer converts the signal so that we can hear it. All right, so what we have here is our signal that we received on the healthy structure plate. And if we downshift that ultrasonic signal to the audible range, this is what we hear. Very nice, clear tone. But if you fracture that steel plate, the crack forces the ultrasonic waves to take different paths. Now we replace that healthy beam with a damaged beam. Put the same sensors on it and apply the same signal again. This is what we get out. You can both see the difference and hear the difference, these extra tones that are now present in that damaged plate. So how would that work on a bridge? You can place a bunch of these devices around trouble spots like gusset plates and then have them ping each other in different combinations, probing for problems such as cracks in the structure. What we do is we deploy arrays of these, many of these on a, on a structure, and then we, we launch waves and we listen. The idea then becomes, if you keep doing that test and a crack has developed, maybe corrosion has occurred, a bolt is coming loose, or the signature that we're detecting is going to fundamentally change. But the ideal technology would not only probe for damage and signal its location, it would literally show you where it's broken. At the University of Michigan, researchers have developed a nanotech skin that could one day cover and monitor bridges 24-7. Here, they've successfully tested a coating that, when stimulated with an electric current, senses damage beneath its surface. And the secret of the sensing skin is the new wonder material of nanotechnology, carbon nanotubes. Carbon nanotubes are microscopic tubes of carbon atoms that join up under extreme temperatures. Many times stronger and lighter than steel, carbon nanotubes are also amazing conductors of electricity. And it's the electrical properties of these tiny tubes that make the sensing skin possible. The honor is all yours, Peter. Breaking the skin, here we go. Excellent. To test the system, Professor Jerry Lynch let me punch holes through a steel plate covered with nanotech skin. So with your incredible strength, you can see that you punctured <laughs> all the way through the plate. The electricity passing through the skin creates a high-resolution map on a computer, providing a visual representation of the puncture holes. So the magnitude of damage would be correlated to the color coding that we have here on our images. The skin could be sprayed or glued over critical bridge components. When damage starts to form, the skin's electrical current is forced to flow in different directions, change that a computer reads and displays as damage. And by altering the chemistry, different layers of the skin can be made to detect different types of damage. Deformation, cracks, corrosion, all at the same time, catching threats before they become dangerous. Could you envision you know, a bridge engineer sitting in his office monitoring the well-being of a structure through a system like this? Yes, that's one of the beauties of this particular technology is how self-evident damage appears in these images. Within months of the Minneapolis collapse, construction on a replacement bridge is already underway. This bridge is a big responsibility for restoring confidence. We expect our bridges to be safe and to get us where we need to be every day. The new bridge is being built of high-density concrete, and its design includes multiple backups against failure, and what's promised to be a state-of-the-art sensor system. The main concept is to have many different technologies working in concert, and collectively these will all work together to bring us the best data for the bridge. But even as the bridge takes shape, the scene evokes mixed feelings for Julie and Sasha. I think this might be the only bridge that I may feel comfortable going across because it is a new structure. The new bridge, no matter how many times I cross it for me, I'll just, I'm never going to get the sounds and the sight out of my head from the actual bridge collapse. 